Hey y'all, hey, we are back with Ruthless. We're on season five, episode two, entitled Tu Fendi Chifamal. I fin I Fendi Chifamal. I don't know how you pronounce it, guys. Unfortunately, if you do, um, type it out phonetically for me in the comments. I have no idea how to say that, and I don't know what it means. If you also know, please let me know. I'd appreciate it. Either way, we're gonna jump right back in it. Um, the lady that recognized her daughter in the last episode jumps up again, um, begging to speak with her daughter, and the highest is kind of sick of her begging and sends the, sends the children away. And um, he tells Ruth, "Like, hey, you need to go take care of her. Like, get out of here." And the lady is resistant to Ruth, and Ruth smacks her and makes her apologize to the highest. Of course, this is all for a show. Anyway, I'm sorry, got the hiccups. Once they are away from everyone, she tells the lady, um, hey, I'm working on a way to fix this. Like, I need you to chill. I need you to calm down. I'm working on something. Just, you need to lay low. Um, calm down. Just relax. And and, and I'm going I'm gonna help us out. Just just calm down in the time being. So now she's by some time so she can continue working on her plan because girl, if you get your head chopped off, you're gonna interfere my plan. Again, you need to settle down. Ruth is immediately black back into her scheming and her planning to get things done. And I appreciate a woman on a mission, of course. Alright, Ruth sees that the children are playing and she stops for she walks past the playground. She sees them playing and she stops for just a second too long. And Obadiah interferes and he um they're talking and she learns that he's the headmaster over the children and that he knows a whole lot about her. She know he knows way more about her than she knows about him. Um and then he wonders, Hey, I wonder what the highest will think. You know, he's my friend. You know, we're really good friends. So it seems like him and Obadiah has an existing relationship. I don't know whether it's on or off the compound, but he seems to be very um personable with the highest. So then he wonders, Hey, what do you think the highest will think once I tell him that you came you I saw you looking for your daughter. Like I, I saw you running behind the bus looking for your daughter. And he offers her a word of advice. He's and she's like, I what daughter? I ain't got no daughter. And he offers her a word of advice and tells her, Hey, like just enjoy the one that you have left. And sing with like, Hey, just just worry about the one that's in your stomach while you can worry about the one that, that's in your stomach because girl, this one is sold out to the Rocco. Okay. So the highest is freaked out. Um, he can't rest with, with all that's going on with Lewis and George and the cartel and the FBI. Like everybody's being on his trails. And so our Daikon offers to unalive the entire world just just to make his, his baby happy. Okay, he really, if, to, if you don't love me that much, I don't want it. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Please don't. Um, to be, you know, just to make him happy. And then he's like, listen, I can give you some happy medicine so that you can sleep. And so now we see him with the spoon and the lighter and he's gonna get him settled in to take a nap now I don't know his medication is kind of having an adverse ref effect on him because he be way too high but whatever we also know that um, elder mother doses his food as well and so maybe that's what he needs to settle his spirits because he's still not gonna settle down all right Aaron sees them bringing the cartel um, the cartel shooter lady, there were two men and a woman. The two men escaped and left her sitting right there trying to take out the FBI on her own because she's the one that shot the FBI agent. Yeah. So they left her there to take the fall. Um, and so he is instantly, well, he's only worried about where Laura is, like, where is she at? And then the, the, Cal is like, Cal is trying to lay, like, hey, things are developing. We'll let you know when we find out. And Desiree's like, mm, whatever, I'll just let you know um, that there was a lot of gunfire exchange in the nighttime, and it was difficult for us to know who was armed and who was trying to escape. And with that being said, Laura was one of the people that were shot, that were unalived. And so he's overcome with anger, and he's like, listen, I hope both all y'all go to hell, because y'all promised me y'all was going to get my wife out of there with no harm to her. Like, he really trying to get to Desiree, like, trying to put them paws on her. And Cal's like, alright, you need to settle down. Like, she's an FBI agent. Don't catch no charges. And so he storms out, and he's going to get his little get back um, by the end of episode 3, but we'll talk about that when we get to it. Either way, um, let me know what y'all think. We don't know the answers just yet, but I don't think that Laura was unalived. Like, I didn't see her located as one of the unalived people. I saw Bridget, but I didn't see her. Maybe she's just telling him that so he could stop, like, being so passionate about going back to get her. I don't know. Maybe she is, and this is just um, Tyler Perry's explanation as to why she's no longer going to be on the show. I don't know. What do y'all think? Because I don't have, like, the, the, the backstories yet. Um, you know, I'm not big enough to have, like, the, the, the behind-the-scenes information quite 
yet. But what y'all think? Let me know what y'all think. Okay. Zane is talking to River because she's worried about Lacey. Um, she's not in the kitchen where she's supposed to be. And um, while we were at the prophecy, she was laughing hysterically. And so we feel like she's losing she's losing her, her faculties, right? And um, River's like, okay, girl, yeah, sure. But I'm only worried about the fact that Manny's going to snitch, snitch, snitch me and Joan out because he had to help us get back to the compound. So now he's got to get back in the highest his good graces before Manny can dime them out, right? And so Zane also tells him, like, listen, Joan, it ain't looking too good for your girl Joan. Like, she 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 got a she got a, a worse infection because Elder Mother tried to stop the bleeding with the dirt. And so the dirt gave her an infection, and so she's barely barely breathing. Um and it seems far fetched if you're not familiar. Um, if you're from like deep down in the country, some people do um put mud or clay or dirt um on a minor cut, you know, not a bear trap wound on a minor cut to kind of stop the blood um or whatever like i for one have not done it but i have seen people done it. i have heard of it so maybe that is her um uh, particular method but girl you're gonna have to get some antibiotics or something or you're gonna kill this girl because this ain't working um either way it seems like river has has given up hope and he's just resigned himself to fact resigned himself to the fact like we back here we were so close to being out and now we back and it's just woe is me so this is what we have to deal with also in this in this season all right Ruth goes to see the heist and he tells her that Obadiah came to see him and um he told the heist how he found Ruth at the playground and of course she's a woman she's got the gift of gab and she's going to be able to talk him down and she says hey um I needed him to show me how he he did it he did such a great job with the kids now they're perfect little kids that you know they were defiant before they didn't listen and now they're perfectly sold out to the rock who i just wanted to see his methods and so he's like okay cool like come on let's take a walk and so he takes Ruth to the punishment trailer and um lewis and george are pissed because they're like why is she not chained up like we chained up like what's tea and um he's like don't worry about it she don't need to be chained up you just worry about your own self and he's like instead of killing y'all because we need the bodies we need the manpower we're going to reprogram y'all much like Obadiah has done with the kids, we're going to reprogram you. And we see that he they're listening to his little rock a tapes, you know, um, to kind of push that into their head. And um, then he puts on Mozart or one of those classical opera type of sounds. Um, and to me, it was torture. But to, to him, he says, you know, this is a lesson about a traitor and where they ended up and going to hell and blah 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 now i don't think it was in english correct me if i'm wrong so i don't know how they would get the message if they don't speak the language that the composition is in but whatever and then he decides to blast it throughout the entire compound so everybody can just hear this wonderful sonnet about hell and um fury sure all right River goes to the heist's trailer and sees that Peter is guarding it. And of course, Peter wanted nothing to do with River because River left him high and dry and he broke his poor little heart. Um, and then the Daikon rolls up on him and Peter tells him, like, hey, River was trying to force his way in to see the highest. Um, and Daikon is like, well, why would you do that? He was like, you know, I was just going to make sure everything was okay. He's like, listen, his safety is number one priority. We just had an issue and I don't need you rolling up on him like that. And he was like, and, and matter of fact, where were you at when everything was going down? He was like, I was hiding in the woods. I wanted to help and I got overwhelmed. I didn't know what to do. And that kind of was like, was you trying to run away? He was like, no, of course not. And so now, you know, He's that kind of like, no, you abandoned him in his time of need. Like, he was willing to die for y'all, and y'all abandoned him. Like, so now you really on Daikon's hit list at this point. And then Manny speaks up, and he's like, I don't really think he was trying to run. Like, I saw him out there helping Joan, you know, trying to get her back to the compound. And um, Daikon's like, hey, let me, let me tell you something about snakes. You know, they're real good about sneaking in, and our job is to stump them out and blah, 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 blah. Who gives a damn? All right. Desiree offers to go into the compound to negotiate with Tyrone, right? Because he realizes that he has his back against the wall. He knows that the FBI is on their trail. He knows that there are some traitors amongst them. He knows that the cartel has sent some hitmen to come get him and their money back. So he is on edge. And we know like he's running out of options and the walls are closing in on him. And so she offers and Cal tells her, like, listen, 
what sisters they make like the, we sent three agents in there um two of which are no longer with us and you know they've been tortured and they've been killed what makes you think you're gonna do any better she's like well i'm not you know they're not any none of them were me so she thinks she's gonna be able to do something that in that anybody else has that nobody else has been able to do and so now we're gonna have to deal with her just thinking she's superwoman and she can do all things great all right as Ruth and the Heist are walking around, around the bodies or whatever, um, one of the ladies, I don't know her name, let's just call her Miss Robinson, she comes running up on him and she's begging him to heal her sister. And um, we found out that she was outside of the gates trying to be on the front line with Elder Mother, wherever she was at. And she was shot during the melee, right? And Ruth tries to interrupt and tells her like, hey, he's way too busy, he's not going to do it. And he gets offended. He's like, don't you tell me what I can do. I make time for who I want to make time for okay baby if you think you can bring this lady back to life go for it um and so he tells her hey bring her to the pavilion and we will work a miracle in front of all you guys and so now we have to deal with again whatever little happy medicine that daikon gave him has him believing that he can bring this lady back from the brink of death with just his words so now we got to deal with that so the lady just brought to the pavilion and daikon and ruth are talking on the side and we and and we both know they both know like he can't bring this damn lady back to life. Like, what are we going to do? And so they both know, like, he's he not going to be able to heal her, so we got to run interference. And um, when he's unable to do it, we know that all hell's going to break loose yet again. Because, first of all, he's, he's on the edge, and he's he's coked out. Like, let's just figure something out. Daikon tells her, like, listen, he's volatile right now, which should imply, like, he's had his happy medication. You know, things go really bad. And Ruth was like, well, you sh this is a fine time to tell me. And then she was like, listen, I'm, I need help. I need your help. And he's like, no, nah, you figured out. It's your problem. So Ruth runs up to the highest and throws herself on him. And she's like, listen, this woman is already dead. They just put her here to set you up. And, you know, they, they want you to fail. And, and he pushes her off to the side. Oh! And he's like, I'm going to work a miracle. Um, he, I'm upset that you, and he gets mad at her because you don't really believe I can do it. And so, he's giving his whole healing speech and putting on a good show. And she begins, like, kind of making noise. Because she wasn't truly dead. Ruth was saying it just in case he, you know, couldn't get a response out of her. And so, she starts to, you know, writhe in pain and kind of make a few sounds. But she's not back in her faculties however we don't get to see the full miracle because in that moment we hear some helicopters some choppers passing by and he thinks that oh oh the chopper's coming in the fbi fbi is about to keep the doors in and this is a sign that we must now all go to the raku and he sounds the alarms so you know um what's his name andrew had unhooked alarms in previous episodes and it seems like they've been hooked back to, back up the alarms are sounding and now we are all scrambling to get our kool-aid so that we can drink it um desiree asked cal like hey like i'm walking towards the gate what's this chopper coming from and he's like listen i called in a favor it's it's there for your safety and she's like yeah for my safety but just my safety you didn't think about all the kids that are in there um when they hear the sirens i'm sure the sirens mean something and now these people are probably gonna you know, be unalived or, or, or be gone on my account. Why did you do that? And so now we got to deal with the melee of this, the siren being going off because of the helicopters being spotted. Okay. And so the children have their cups in hand and they're ready to drink. And Ruth's over here on the, t on the side talking to Kelly, like, Kelly, put that, put that damn cup down. She's like, and she's over here looking like, my name ain't Kelly. My name is Ruby. So she's very much been brainwashed. And she, she buys into this thing now. And she's ready to do what she has to do to go see the Raku. And um, Elder Mother brings the highest his, his cup. And we thinking like this is this is it. This is the end. And so everybody's got their they cups up. And we're ready to follow the highest's lead. And that is how um, we end Season 5 Episode 2. Um, again, things are picking up. We got... A lot of stuff coming in. I'm just going to jump right into episode 3. Uh, like, comment, share, subscribe, or whatever it is that you feel like doing. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace.